What's going on everybody? My name is Eli and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a fourth year dental student at Boston University Goldman School of Dental Medicine and on this channel, I make vlogs with my dental school journey as well as videos with advice for pre-dental students. Make sure you subscribe so you can get more videos like this straight to your home page as soon as they drop. So for this third episode of my Getting Into Dental School 101 series, I'm gonna talk about volunteering and shadowing. If you haven't watched the first two videos of this series, pause this video and go watch them now. I made a series where I talk about how to get into dental school, everything you need to do from high school until choosing a dental school. This is the third episode and I'm talking about volunteering slash shadowing. As the last video, I talked about going to college and what you should do when you're in college. So a lot of dental schools want to see volunteering and shadowing hours before you apply to dental school. And why is that? Number one, shadowing hours are super important. It shows that you've been invested in the field and you've taken the time to go see what it's about and learn more about dentistry. Often people ask if working as a dental assistant or a dental hygienist counts as shadowing and from what I've heard from most people is no. You have to be doing some unpaid shadowing in a dental office in order for it to count as shadowing. Dental assisting and being a hygienist or working at a front desk does not necessarily count. Shadowing is super important because it allows you to see the type of works that dentists do on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of the time people don't see their dentists at their regular cleaning appointments besides a quick check and they don't really know what it is that dentists do throughout their day. I took the chance to shadow and I saw a lot of what dentists do throughout the day as well as outside of work. These were one of the main things that made me want to pursue dentistry as a career. Seeing what dentists do as well as what running a dental practice is like and what living a dentist lifestyle outside of work is like was a big reason why I chose to pursue dentistry as a career. I think most schools would agree that if you don't spend an ample time shadowing the dental field, that you don't really know if you want to pursue dentistry as a career. Dental school is a big commitment as far as money, time, etc. And you need to be sure that that's what you want to do because most schools are not accepting you just so they can get rid of you. It looks better on a school if they can keep their students, not get rid of them. So it's very important that you spend time shadowing before you go to dental school, whether that's during your gap year, whether that's when you're in college, etc. And once again, I mentioned this in earlier videos, but shadowing when you're in high school typically does not count and dental schools want to see shadowing from college age or older. Now, how many shadowing hours that are required varies from school to school. From what I've seen, my school, Boston University, does not have a minimum shadowing hours required. But on the IDEA Dental School Explorer, it tells you how many shadowing hours are required for any dental school. And I would say on average, I see 75 to 100 hours required by each school. I would say take some time Find one or two dentists that you really want to develop a relationship with and shadow them as often as you can. Usually, you can get a letter of recommendation for dental school from one of these dentists if you spent enough time with them, talking with them about what they do and why you want to go to dental school. And usually, that's a very good sign to dental schools that you have a recommendation from someone who is already in the dental field. Volunteering is also very important to a lot of dental schools because they want to see that you have a knack for servicing your community. When I was in undergrad, I volunteered at a physical therapy inpatient hospital. Of course, this is not the same thing as dentistry or volunteering in something dental based, but this was volunteering in healthcare and I do think it played a significant role in my ability to be accepted into dental school. I used to go to this rehab center hospital, University of Maryland Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Institute, because I thought I wanted to go to med school and be an orthopedic surgeon. At this hospital, I spent my time volunteering, helping patients that were in the hospital with their physical therapy rehab. And then I resumed volunteering there after I graduated college and I was in the occupational therapy unit, helping people who struggle from traumatic brain injuries or strokes that were just trying to get their regular general sense of direction and activity back so that they can go home from the hospital. I spent probably over 200 hours volunteering at this hospital. And at the time, I was really doing it because I just wanted to serve my community in some way. I wanted to show the organizations that I was interested in, like Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and the med schools that I 
originally thought I was going to going to apply to that I'm dedicated to helping my community and the hours just built up honestly like I would go every day during my winter break like Monday through Thursday um, but when I graduated college I would work Monday through Friday full time and then I would go there Saturday mornings just for like three or four hours and I would volunteer there and it, it was you know it was really cool I mean I developed some relationships with people uh, I learned more about patient interaction. I think that was one of the best things I got out of it was just learning how to interact with patients. And yeah, overall, it was just a really good experience. But I suggest getting involved in something that you can do over a period of time and you can develop relationships with the people there. I never asked anyone there for a letter of recommendation, but that probably would have been a good one to get that just showed uh, how I interact with patients, my skills as a uh, someone that provides care, just random things that, you know, dental schools might have found interesting and, you know, might have just made them decide that they wanted to interview me just to see who I am and what kind of person I am. So volunteering and shadowing, very important for applying to dental school and getting into dental school. Sometimes these things are not required, but they are definitely helpful and definitely things that you should look into doing if your goal is to one day get into dental school and you're around the range of in college or about to graduate college. So I hope this video helped. This is the third video. In the next video, I'll be talking about the non-traditional path to dental school. Very important topic for me to talk about because I took a super non-traditional path. I wasn't even pre-dent until after college. So stay tuned for that video. I'll see y'all in the next one. And I hope this one helped y'all a little bit as well. Peace.